know by now I'm Matt, you probably see that I also have a title at Red Cross. Um, the title kind of uh, sometimes feels like it doesn't have day-to-day -day impact on people's lives, so I think of it like um, sort of chief developer advocate, I guess, um, trying to make life easier for folks. So we've had a 10-year journey towards observability, and um, if I can just walk through some of these steps, this is probably going to be the bulk of my five minutes. Uh, Ancient history at Red Cross, from Katrina to Sandy, you probably remember those disasters. Red Cross life revolves around disasters and disaster relief efforts. We were completely outsourced to a vendor, completely dependent on um, outside help to do all of our no internal capabilities whatsoever. And then when I joined in 20, late 2012 through 2013, we sort of started to take control of, of our uh, digital products and um, online marketing efforts, and so um, that really looked like rapid hiring, you know, building out a team, building out processes. We instituted Agile. Um, at the time, I led fundraising and marketing technology group as a whole, so we did feature delivery, we did platform operations, we did business engagement, uh, you know, testing, uh, everything, all in under one house, and so we, we grew rapidly during that time. Um, that allowed us to launch a sort of Gen 2 platform in 2018, the new commerce platform, which is when we started with our very first implementation of observability. And so we brought in a off-the-shelf product. I will not mention the name here because they are not a sponsor. Their rival is, so I will not mention which one it is. Um, um, but it really was kind of the beginning of developers saying, and in particular my, you know, director of engineering was very good hands-on developer as well, saying, well, okay, this is, you know, what we're going to do for solving our own needs around observability, making sure this platform that we now own can be uh, monitored. And so some of the lessons learned, uh, that went pretty quick. I think that was supposed to go to two minutes and five seconds. Something's wrong. See, it's not me. So I'll just keep talking. Um, so after that, after you know, my group brought in observability, that started to um, kind of proliferate across the organization. Um, I also got a new role helping other or, uh, teams be more agile and implement you know, more of a product-focused delivery um, process. And um, they started to adopt uh, observability culture. Um, sometimes using their own tools, sometimes using the one that we brought in uh, to the point that we kind of grew organically and we had a bunch of different um, products running until about last year when we standardized on one and we have this sort of enterprise, enterprise platform now. So definitely went out of order and wasn't timed right. So can we go back one slide or is that not possible? So just to quickly hit some of the lessons learned, you know, it started with self-preservation. That is the seed, right? When developers have, you know, healthy autonomy, psychological safety, some budget and support from people like me who maybe don't have hands on keyboards anymore, but, you know, recognize that the people have to do their jobs and figure out their own solutions and help them do that. So with that, um, you know, also helping developers help each other, right? Uh, even if you're not on the same team, you help each other. Sometimes one size doesn't fit all, right? One size fits most. And if you be prepared for rough edges, it's going to work out. We have some use cases that are not supported by that enterprise standard, in which case we have to sort of have workarounds, but, you know, make do with um, what we can in those edge cases. For us, having clear vision really helped, you know, setting people down the path of, okay, let's try to do it. Well, keep this party line around here are the resources that we can provide to you as an organization to help you solve your observability challenges. Um, some top down support and announcement from the CIO that this is our enterprise standard certainly helped. But it's all about sort of balancing that self organization with uh, growth at scale and trying to get people to kind of get some uh, efficiency uh, across the organization. Monitoring is less than observability. Uh, I don't know if you guys feel this way, but monitoring is good, uh, but measuring customer impact is be better, whether that's customer impact for internal customers or that's external customers if you're doing digital marketing, getting a read on customer satisfaction, that promoter score, those sorts of things really will guide you in your next set of questions around what can we do better. Uh, and that's really what, you know, this last piece is, is 
as long as you're sort of at, you know, evolving and asking questions around what is working, what is not working, how do we get better, how do we create better outcomes for customers, um, that sort of you know, continuous evolution and continuous improvement really doesn't stop. So the timer ran out, but I'm claiming. Keep talking until the last slide goes up. Yeah, I'm claiming there's something a foul here. All right, so this is my last slide. So for me, observability has been a natural progression from people. So this is not a technology talk. I should have said it at the beginning, right? From people who are invested in their work, you know, motivated, so accountable for, for their work, motivated by their mission. At Red Cross, it's a little bit easier because we're a mission-driven organization. You know, at your organization, maybe your mission is, is different. And committed to a growth mindset. And all that leads to, again, a culture where you're sort of asking, what can I do better? What is working? What is not working? And um, you know, constantly improving from there. So, thank you. <laughs>